Praise God. How's everybody doing today? Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. He's worthy. He's worthy of all of our praise. If you love him today, let's show it. Let's show it. Tell him, thank you, Lord. Everybody. Thank you, Lord. Just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord. You've been good to me, Lord. You've been, yeah, so, so, so good. When I think about what you've done for me, Lord, you've been so. Every day of my life, Lord, you've been so good. Yeah, I just want to thank you, you Lord. One more thing, you brought me out, you brought yeah, me, brought me. When I was lost in sin, Lord, you brought me, you brought me out. I'm so glad to be where you brought me, you brought yeah, me, brought me out. That's why I just want to thank you, Lord. Can I thank one more time. Lord, 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 I thank, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to thank you, thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Lord, Lord, thank yeah. you, thank you, Lord. I just want to say, yeah, I just want to tell him one more time. I just, I just want to thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we come now just to say thank you. You've been so good to us. Been better to us than we've been to ourselves. You put food on our tables and shelter over our head, clothes on our backs and shoes on our feet. We're mighty grateful today. We come with hearts of thanksgiving. Master, as we come, we pray that thou would search our hearts and search our minds. And if you find anything that's not right, please move it right now. Let your Holy Spirit rule, guide, and direct that everything that is said and done here today, that your name, We'll get the glory. Holy Spirit, show up and show out. And we know everything will be all right. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Clap for praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Our scripture this morning is going to be found in the book of uh, Isaiah. Turn the lights on over there, please. Isaiah chapter 9, amen, as we're getting ready for Christmas season, amen. All right, we want to concentrate on uh, Jesus' birth, amen, in Isaiah 9, beginning with verse 1, thank you. It says, nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted, 
the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and uh, afterwards did more grievously uh, afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan and Galilee of the nations. The people that walk in darkness have been a seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them has the light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nations and not increase the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy in harvest. And uh, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder. The rod of his oppressor as in the day of Midian. For every battle of the warriors is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And verse 7 says, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment, with the justice from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. Isaiah chapter 9 verses 1 through 7. Let's thank God for his word today. May it sanctify deep in our hearts that it might be a light and guide unto our pathway. Amen. At this time we will hear from our praise team. Give them a hand as they come if you will. Hallelujah.
And amen. Praise God. Praise him. Amen. And lift him up. Amen. We should exalt the Lord today because he's worthy of our praise. Amen. So we thank God once again for his grace and his mercy. Amen. I don't know about you, but I feel his spirit in this place. Amen. The atmosphere is just full of the joy of the Lord. Amen. So as we come this morning to give him praise and give him worship and give him all of the honor. Amen. Honor to all of you who are listening in today and those of you that are here. Those might be in your cars. Amen. We thank God for you joining us today. For truly, this is the day the Lord has made and we real rejoice. Amen. And be glad in it. Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but the Lord is blessing me right now. Amen. I, I don't need a crowd to give him praise because he's been good to me. When the crowd wasn't there, he put food on my table. When the crowd wasn't there, he put clothes on my back. So I don't mind giving him praise all by myself. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Praise God. We want to uh, let you know that this is our communion Sunday. Amen. As we take part in the Lord's Supper, amen, the first Sunday in December, praise God. Now, I, I, I am sorry um, to have to give you some unsettling news uh, due to the rising of the coronavirus. Uh, we will have to go back to having just virtual service. Amen. Uh, so starting next Sunday, next Sunday, we will only have uh, 1045 virtual service. And we hope that you will continue uh, tuning in and watching us uh, on social media. Amen. Uh, that we still can stay connected and we still can give worship to the Lord. Praise God. Uh, we know that this coronavirus is, is no joke. And so we have to take all precautions. And uh, we don't want our staff to be, amen, exposed to anything. And we want, don't want you to be exposed to anything. So because of that, we will go back to virtual uh, services until further notice. Amen. So let's keep each other in prayer. We want to thank all of you that joined us on last evening for our conference uh, called Prayer Service. Amen. We're having a joyous time. I wish, wish you would come and join in with us. Amen. We're praying for all of those on our sick and concern list, and we're praying for our country. Amen. So we wish that you would join us because this is what the Lord has asked of us. If my people, which is the church, amen, those who are believers, amen, will humble themselves and pray, amen. So we would just learn to follow God's instructions. Things will change, amen. Praise God. So let us continue praying for the country that things will be turned around with our new administration. Thank you for joining us on Wednesday evening for our Bible study at 6 p.m. Amen. We appreciate all of you who are doing that. God bless you. All right. Uh, let us continue praying for those on our uh, sick and concerned list and those who might be bereaving. Uh, we ask your prayers for one of our praise team members, Sister Tasha Harrell and her mother, First Lady Alice Jones of Greater Zion Hill. Uh, Baptist Church in Smyrna, uh, First Lady Jones' mother passed on last week uh, in Alabama, so we ask that you keep her lifted in prayer. Also, Dickiness uh, Michelle Dickinson on pass in Alabama, a man and uh, Sister Angela Smith father passed also, so keep them in your prayers. Uh, Sister Karen Garman on pass in Chicago. Amen. Please keep them lifted in prayer. Amen. Pete 
Sister Pat Norwood, nephew, and your friends. He was in a serious car accident on his way back to school. Praise God. Uh, got some good news on Friday that he was able to leave the hospital and go home. Amen. So that's a blessing. Praise God. Amen. Pray for our usher, uh, Sister Kim Drum, uh, who has been diagnosed with uh, cancer. She's in Kennestown Hospital. Let's keep her in your prayers. Sister D. Walton, as she recovers. Sister Valerie Pope, husband, as he's recovering. Uh, Deacon Russell Vaughn, Mother Beer. Uh, Deacon Holman, as he recovers. Uh, Deacon Dorsey Johnson. Usher Angie Smith, who had a stroke. Uh, Sister Angela Young's mother, who has lung cancer. Deaconess Karen Armstrong, who has breast cancer. Uh, Sister uh, Yolanda Davis and family. Also, Deaconess Doris Gordon, Sister Ali Lord in Gaston, North Carolina. Sister Bessie Bonney, Mary Rice, Mother Wyatt, Mother Young, Sister Ann Lowry, Dr. Peoples, and all the rest that is on our sick and concerned list. Please keep them lifted in prayer. Prayer changes things, amen. By faith, we believe the prayers of the righteous avail as much, amen. So if we haven't called your name, believe me, our faith and prayers goes out for you, whatever your situation is. God bless you. This time, we normally would be uh, collecting our tithing offering. Uh, we thank all of you who are sending your tithe and your offerings in and those who are dropping them off here at the church or mailing them in. Thank you so very much. And those of you that are here that are giving, we appreciate you so much. God bless you. At this time, we're going to prepare our hearts and minds for our communion service. Amen. For this is the time that we need to remember, amen, what the Lord has done for us. I don't know about you, but uh, I can't help but remember what God has done for me. How he's brought me out, how he saved me when I couldn't save myself, amen. The Word of God tells us in the Gospel of Luke chapter 22, beginning with verse 14. The Gospel of Luke chapter 22, verse 14. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not eat any more thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread and gave thanks and break it and gave it unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. But behold, the hands of him that betray me and with me on the table. And truly, the Son of Man goeth, and it was determined. But woe unto the man whom he is betrayed. And they began to inquire among themselves which of them it was that should do this thing. Amen. Verses 14 to 23 of the 22nd chapter of Luke. May God bless the reading of his word and sanctify deep within our hearts. As we prepare our hearts and minds to give our hymn, a preparation will be found. Amen. Uh, in our hymn books, uh, most of you probably already know it, uh, page 411 says lift him up the choir been lifting him up so we're going to continue lifting him up amen 411 amen lift him up praise God how to reach the masses men of every birth for an answer Jesus gave the key Ready, if I, if I, if I be lifted 
Lift him up. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask God's blessings upon the bread and the fruit of the vine. As I pray, we ask that you would pray that God would search your hearts and search your minds. And if he finds anything that's not right, that he'll move it. That we don't eat or drink damnation unto our souls. Father God, we come now to thank you. For this time of dining with you by way of your Lord's Supper. Ask our blessings upon the bread that represents your broken body. The fruit of the vine that represents your blood that was shaded for the sins of the world. Pray, dear Master, that I would take it now and change it from a physical use to a spiritual use. As we eat and as we drink. We remember all that you have done for us. Pray, Master, that you search our hearts and our minds. And if we find anything not right, please move it right now. We may not eat or drink damnation unto our souls. That we'll be found worthy by faith in your son, Jesus, to partake in this supper. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Jesus took the bread and break it, said, divide it among yourself. Let us all eat together in remembrance of him. Likewise, through the divine that represents his blood that was shaded for the sins of the world, let us all drink together in remembrance of him. Feed after me, Lord, I remember. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you so very much. All right, we're going to be favored with another song coming from our praise team. Give them a hand as they come. Praise God.
will sing hallelujah the highest praise come on give God some praise I will sing hallelujah oh Lord I bless the Lord thank you praise team and musicians all right we're going to get into the word at this time there in Isaiah chapter 9 one verse I want us to take note of, verse number 6, Isaiah chapter 9, verse number 6, amen, as we start our Christmas series, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God everlasting father the prince of peace thank you you might be seated father we thank you for this privilege once again to come together to spend time in your word let your holy spirit now take these lips of clear minds and use them for your glory that your people might hear a word from you today they might be blessed they might be saved they might be set free Come, Holy Spirit, and do what you do best. Show up and show out, and we know everything will be all right. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, there in the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, amen, verses 1 through 7. As we concentrate for our text today on verse 6, uh, these are the words of Isaiah, a man giving hope for a bad situation, a man, um, I want to talk to you from this subject, for unto us a child is born, unto us a child is born. Uh, the passage in Isaiah 9, 6, through seven is one of the spectacular prophecies given in the book of Isaiah about uh, Messiah's coming. I have read this passage many times, sang it and heard it read, but this week, this week, brothers and sisters, I have uh, two words have come alive in my spirit. Amen. Uh, two little words that change the whole perspective 
of this prophecy. Amen. Those uh, words are unto us. Amen. Unto us. They, they changed this form from a vigor and uh, impersonal word to a powerful personal prediction. Uh, they take the merely uh, theoretical and transform it into the practical. The great truth of this passage are good alone, but like application. Without these two words, the verses like personal significance. With them, they offer great hope and individual consolation. A person might be a number of good things and still have no effect on me. For instance, there might be a man who is rich, well-respected, a good and caring father, devoted husband, and any uh, number of other positive traits. But his wealth is of no use to us. He is not our father, so his uh, amen, parenting skills don't help us. He is not our spouse, so his uh, being a great husband has little to do with us. But Isaiah, Isaiah tells us that this child, this son, was born, and this son was given unto us. What he is in is saying in this verse, he is in relationship to us. He came for us. Our, a man, the, the one that would benefit us. He is not just abstractly wonderful. He is wonderful in our lives. He is not just some counselor. He's our counselor. He is not some far removed deity. He is our mighty God. He's not just some father. He is our everlasting father. He's not peace in an abstract way. He is our peace. Yes, he came for our benefit. I wish I had some help here today. He came, amen, he came to where we were because we could not go where he was. If we wanted the benefits of being with him, we would come to us and apply them as needed. You see, Christmas isn't just a story about a baby being born. It's about a baby being born for us and given to us. This is a gift that God is laying on your doorstep. Uh, how, how are you going to respond? Some natural questions would be, why is the son being given to us? How much work is it, amen, to, to take care of this baby? Will I have to change this baby's diapers and feed him? Amen. Isaiah tells us why God gives us this son as he talks about who he is and what he would do. So this morning, my brothers and sisters, we are going to look at these descriptions of the baby boy put at our doorstep. And hopefully these descriptions will open the door to our hearts and make you welcome the true meaning of Christmas, which is unto us. A son is born. Unto us, a child is born, a man that gives us a sense of expectancy. It gives us a sense of, amen, potentiality. And it gives us a sense of responsibility. Isaiah bursts into the Advent season with these profound words uttered in prophecy in the 8th century BCE. Amen. In other words, before the common era, these words has, amen, the authenticity of one who has experienced the wonder and the majesty of God's presence in their lives. Too often, people seek to speak a word from the Lord 
even though, amen, there appears to be no visible evidence that the light of God countenance have shined in their lives. When you have met God for yourself, you should move out of life's dark shadow into the marvelous light. The things I used to do, I don't do as much anymore. There should be a change in your lifestyle, meaning that what you do should be different. Where a man you go should be beneficial and what you say should be encouraging. There should be a change in your life work meaning. What you put your hands on should enhance the kingdom of God. What you put your heart, a man in, should bless the people of God. And what you set your mind to do, a man should usher people into God's presence. There should be a change in your lifestyle, meaning that you should depend on God's word. You should develop a God-like mind. You should be assured of God's provisions for your life. And so, my brothers and sisters, this is what happened to Isaiah in the year that King Uzziah died. He met the Lord. In that moment, he realized that God is holy. Holy, holy. And that the whole world is full of his glory. That's important because those were dark days in the life of the God's people. A man, the northern Israel was under siege and the monsters had been captured. A man, Judah uh, invaded and Nineveh and Jerusalem was destroyed. A man, these were dark days. People were being uprooted from their homeland and all the vestiges of what was known as communal living was gone. Foreign gods and idol gods was being erected everywhere. And in the midst of these tribulations, Isaiah experienced a conversion. If you have met the Lord, there should be no doubt that a wonderful change has been wrought in your life. Amen. The songwriter says, since Jesus have come into my heart. So Isaiah experienced a conversion that gives clarity to his sinfulness and urgency to the need, amen, for God's righteousness. His heart, yeah, he, he heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? And Isaiah responded by saying, Here, my Lord, send me. What better testimony can one give during this Advent season than to give to God a willing spirit to serve him, to proclaim, to share, or to do what God needs done to redeem his world? from destructions. So my brothers and sisters, what better testimony can one give during this Advent season than to respond to the call of God by saying, Lord, here am I. Lord, send me. We find ourselves with a world that seems to be spinning out of control. Our terror alert are at all high time high. We are afraid even of the shadows because we don't know what lurking beyond our view. We find ourselves not only in a world spinning out of control, it is evolving not into community, but into an arc. There seems to be no center. Life anchor seems to have a man given away. Where are the absolute in life? What can we depend on? 
where can you go for assurance and affirmation? These times are no different than the day of Isaiah. Mean, amen, that we who are Christians are experiencing some things that seem like that nobody else have experienced. But I come by to tell you today that there's nothing new under the sun. My God from on high, for these times have happened before. It lets us know, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, that there is spiritness, uh, that violence uh, is running everywhere. Uh, there's little faith. Uh, people are ruled uh, by dark forces, power. Uh, Isaiah uh, is touched by God uh, in a new, uh, unique way. Uh, and God gives him uh, an assignment. Uh, good God Almighty, uh, I see him now. Uh, speak the power uh, of the day uh, and also speak uh, to my people. Uh, you find Isaiah uh, speaking truth uh, to the power. Uh, you also uh, find him uh, encourage the people uh, with prophecy. Uh, he tells them uh, uh, you are looking uh, for a sign uh, from the Lord. Uh, look no further. Uh, he calls them uh, to remembrance. He said, don't you remember what happened in the days of Midian when it was a time yeah, to do battle with the Middle Knights. The Lord told Gideon that he had too many people with him to go to battle. Good God Almighty, ask the people who are afraid, those that were afraid, was they able to leave. The Lord then said, you still have too many people to go into battle with the middle nights. If you take too many, you will win. Then you will think it was because of your might. But I want you to know it is the Lord who deliver you. Take your men down to the water and those that bow down on the knees leave them there and take the men who lap the water like a dog and there remain on the 300 men get in he took that 300 and again the middle nights and the Ammonites who were there allies with the sound of the trumpet and the noise of the pitcher breaking was able to destroy all of their enemies. I stopped by to let you know if God people will make some noise, if God people will get down on their knees, if God people will be faithful, God will destroy our enemies. God will remove those that are causing us to be in the present. They learned something that day. They learned that the battle is not yours. It's the Lord that saying Isaiah who reminds the people to what God has done. He said, speak a word into their spirit that rings with hope until this day. I hear I hear, good God Almighty, I, I hear, I dare say, unto us, a child is born. This is a bold statement, because not only was Israel and Judah under attack, they were divided. The kingdom of Israel was divided north and south. But good God Almighty, Isaiah, he spoke a word, a man, a word of unity to the community. As he says, for unto us, good God Almighty, sometimes 
Uh, we are distant ourselves uh, from our neighbors, uh, but the blessings of God uh, are not for uh, a chosen few. Uh, Isaiah uh, says uh, they are for, uh, they are for us, uh, they are for us. Uh, that's good news, uh, just to know uh, that God's grace uh, and mercy uh, is available uh, to every one of us, uh, is available uh, to us. Uh, God uh, does not uh, distinguish us uh, by where uh, we were born. Uh, he don't separate us uh, by what uh, we might have. Uh, he definitely uh, doesn't care. Uh, what school uh, you attended, uh, what colors uh, you wear, uh, goodness uh, of God, uh, good God Almighty, uh, goodness uh, of God uh, is available uh, to everyone. Uh, God's power uh, is not reserved uh, for those uh, who boast uh, or those uh, who brag. Uh, his power uh, may manifest uh, by his will uh, is available uh, to everyone. Uh, it's available uh, to us uh, unto us uh, a child uh, is born. Uh, there are three things uh, we learned. Uh, then I say, uh, open in the text, uh, he says, a child uh, being born uh, gives us uh, a sense uh, of expectancy. Uh, when uh, times are tough, uh, when the way is dark, uh, when you don't know uh, which way to turn, uh, God will make you, uh, he'll make a way uh, out of your way. Uh, he's the water uh, of those. Uh, who diligently will seek him. A spiritual key of God is expectancy. Expectancy is tied to faith. It's tied to belief. Do I have a witness here? I come by to let you know, I don't know about you, but I'm expecting a blessing from the Lord every day. This morning, when I rose, I didn't have no doubt. I knew he would work it out. Expectancy is based upon God's sureness. He will show up in your life. If you're sick, he'll show up. If you're always lonely, he'll show up. If it seems like you can't see your way, he'll show up. Yes, the word says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall fire up with wings of eagle. They shall run and not faint. They shall walk and not faint. Good God Almighty, child of God, child of God, I want you to know a child uh, is being given uh, a man uh, with a sense uh, of potentiality. Uh, potentiality uh, refers uh, to the power uh, a child possesses, uh, inheritance uh, by virtue uh, of being God, uh, only son, uh, good God Almighty. Uh, that's why uh, I'm able uh, to give him praise uh, because I know uh, when I deal with the facts of God, he will supply my every need. He'll make my enemy my footstool. When I am at a fly to the potential of God, I know he walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I'm his own unto us. A child is born. It gives us uh, a sense uh, of expectancy. Uh, it gives us uh, a sense uh, of potentiality. Uh, and finally, uh, as I take my seat, uh, a child uh, being born uh, gives a sense uh, of responsibility. Uh, God uh, will not do uh, what you can do. Uh, you can't do uh, what God can do. Uh, God says, uh, here is uh, my child. Uh, you 
have the responsibility to go tell the world, go tell somebody, go tell it on the mountain, down in the valley, tell it on the hills, tell somebody that he is alive today, tell somebody that today a child is born, he's born down in my heart, he makes me want to shout, he makes me love my enemies, he gives me comfort in the time of need, go tell somebody, there is a man that's being born, if you're sick, he'll be a healer, if you're down, he'll pick you up, go tell somebody, a child, hey, hey, a child, there, a child is born. Glory to God. Unto us, a child is born. Don't take it for granted. God himself came down to make sure we get out of time and go back to eternity. As we journey here in the land of the dying, on our way to the land of the living, the word says, occupy until I come. You need to tell your neighbor, he's coming back one day for you and for me. For unto us, a child is born. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. We pray that we have said a word that will encourage you, that gives you hope to know that trouble don't last always. God has sent us the hope that we might be overcomers. Let us pray. Father, we thank you at this time, even for those that are sick today. We pray that you will send your healing power. God, we know you have a plan for our lives. And many of us who might be ailing just have to go through the process of this life. But you promise that you would never leave us and you would never forsake us. And so we are holding on to your unchanging hands that you're going to work things out for our good. Lord, we pray for the sinner today. We ask that he would pray this prayer. Dear Lord, I come to thee, a sinner that needs to be saved. Forgive me, Lord, for all of my sins and take me and own me as your child. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Now, Lord, stir up the gift that is in me, that I might do your holy will. Thank you, Father, for saving my soul. Lord Jesus, hear our cry today as we put our all on the altar. Comfort those who are bereaving. Let them know that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Bless those, Lord, who have lost jobs, who have lost their homes. Be with them, Lord. Those, Father, who seemingly don't know the way, we pray that you will show them the way. And Lord, if you do it, we'll be so careful to give your name the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Let's praise God today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. Amen for 
all of his blessings. We thank, amen, our praise team for blessing us this morning. Amen. Thank our musicians. Amen. Thank our ushers. Praise God. Our sound technician. Amen. Thank you so very much to make this service what it is. Amen. God bless you as we get ready to go now. The word of God tells us at the end of the supper they sang the hymn and they went out to the Mount of Olives. Amen. We don't have a man, one that uh, is close to us, but we do have trials and tribulations that we face every day. And I advise you to get a song in your heart and in your spirit. If it's nothing but I know the Lord will make a way somehow. Amen. As we fellowship, we're not here, but if you would sing with me, it would be like you are here. Amen. What? A fellowship, what a joy by leaning it on, it relaxed it on. What a blessed day, what a peace of mind leaning it on, it relaxed it on. Let's stand. We are leading every day. We are leading. of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide us now, henceforth and forevermore. Let every heart say, Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful and safe week is our prayer. Amen.